Hello, my name is Pete Gerlach. I have been a family therapist for 33 years. I've studied human beings, myself and others, for over 70 years. I have formed a lot of opinions, and the purpose of this and other videos is to share what I've learned across these many years. Today I want to focus on an aspect of normal relationships between adults and kids. And the aspect is advice. Um, would you agree that often you yourself and or other people advise each other? All kids and adults have problems. Problems are unmet local or chronic needs, discomforts. We all have problems. Typically, except for introverts, um, we, if we trust somebody, we may choose to talk about our problems. Okay? When other people tell you of their problems, how do you react? Are you aware? Uh, linguists and anthropologists say, typical females, people with female brains, uh, tend to listen with compassion and empathy. They may or may not offer advice. Typical male brains usually re have a reaction like, oh, how can you or we fix your problem? It's a major gender difference. Obviously, there are many exceptions. By the way, let's define advice. It's different than teaching or informing. Advising, stop to think, how would you describe advising? If you told a 12-year-old child who said, what is advising? What would you say? What I say is advising is indirectly or directly suggesting or decreeing what another person should do. We suggest how other people should modify their behavior or their thoughts or their values. So that's what advice is, is giving people an opinion about how they should change. Okay. Um, as you may have seen in one of my other videos on communication, two reasons out of five that we all communicate, infants, children, adults, everybody. Two of the five reasons we communicate um, are A, to vent. Remember the last time you simply needed to talk to somebody else who was willing to listen? We need to vent. Um, and another thing we need is to cause action or cause change. Um, that is parallel to another need about giving or getting information. So if you ask for advice, that's a basic communication need. Can you give me some information? Will you give me your opinion? People who need to vent don't need advice, usually. They may segue into saying, that's my problem, do you have a suggestion? But at least when they are venting, usually men and women don't need to be fixed. Um, if they seek advice, they may be open to your well-intentioned suggestions. So one of the morals then becomes, if you're confronted with someone who's talking about their problem, it's useful to stop and silently say, hmm, what does my partner need? Are they venting or do they need information? Here's the reason why that's valuable. If you don't do that, and if you blunder into saying, oh, well, okay, you, uh, you're you having trouble uh, filling out your income tax. Well, what you ought to do, you know, I know a good firm here in town. These people are, have a reasonable uh, fee and they're really good. They respond very quickly and they'll really help you out. So you ought to call this, you ought to call Smith and Company or whoever. Okay, you blunder into giving advice right away. Um, that may be perfectly fine. If the other person does not want advice or is not ready to receive advice, your well-intentioned suggestion may come across as arrogant. It may contain the implied message, I know better than you how you should live your life. People who are shame-based, who were wounded in childhood, 
intend to be defensive and criticizing of themselves and very sensitive to other people criticizing them. Shame-based people are often uh, in a place of misinterpreting well-intentioned advice as some kind of superior statement like, I know better than you, you ought to do this. To say what I hope is obvious, not only is what you advise relevant, uh, how you advise is relevant. If your attitude, if you're unconscious of your attitude and you really think, I can't, that's a silly problem, why don't you know how to fix that? Let me tell you, let me show you how to fix that. It's obvious. If you have a one-up attitude about that, no matter how well-intentioned your advice is and how you phrase it, it's very likely to be received, except by the most balanced of people, as a put-down. That's not your intention. But if it is received as a put-down, guess what? People's emotion level tends to go up, their hearing stops, they get defensive and resentful, and they pull in or out, away, in or away. And you are left thinking, what happened? I was just trying to be helpful. So what's the moral here? In important situations and relationships, when someone tells you of a problem, be aware of your this person's need at the moment. Are they needing to vent? In which case, the, the really helpful response is doing something called empathic listening. That's in one of my other videos. Okay, If they obviously need more than venting, if they're looking for information or ideas or suggestions, um, be aware of your attitude. If your attitude is you and I are of equal dignity and my needs and your needs are equally important, go ahead. If you have the attitude like, I know more than you, I'm probably smarter than you or better than you, if you are one up, don't offer advice because there's a very high risk it will incur resentment and resistance, which is probably not what you want. Another suggestion, if someone clearly wants advice, um, is to use a technique called digging down. You'll find that in the section on communication tips and suggestions in my videos and my website. Digging down helps people get clear on what they really need. That's a whole separate topic I'm not going to review right here, other than to summarize. Frequently, when people say, I need X, X is a surface symptom of something underneath that that they really need. So before you give advice, do what you can to help this person dig down and find out their primary need. What are they really looking for? Okay, a uh, quick example, if the person says, I just can't figure out to get along with Jose or whoever, and you say you'd like to get along better with them. That's empathic listening. And they say, yeah, I don't know how to do it. And your question then becomes, uh, why do you need to get along better with Jose? And you can learn more information from that question. Anyway, if someone needs advice and is open to advice, incidentally, one way you can find out is to ask them if you're not sure, um, are you open to some advice right now? So are you looking for ideas, or however you would say it in your language? Ask. Nothing complicated about that. Be prepared for, well, no, not really. Or, yeah, I'd be grateful. Do you have any ideas? Um, ask. If they say yes, note the difference uh, between, you may have heard this old adage from many years ago for many wise people. Is it better to give a hungry person a fish or to teach them how to fish? You ever been in that position where you needed an immediate advice and someone didn't give you an immediate answer? They said, you know, here's a way to find out the answer. You do it. I'm not going to do it for you. This is a judgment call. It's complex. And for the moment, I'm speaking just of advising adults. So make a judgment call, depending on the person and your relationship and the nature of the problem. 
if you wish to help, if that's your true motive, pause and reflect. Is it better if I give specific current advice, call Smith and Company now, specific advice, or would it be better to advise the person and to teach them how to research their own answer, teach them how to problem solve? By the way, I have a video on exactly how to do that. So there are several things to be aware of if you choose to give another person advice. Um, be aware of what they need, venting versus information. Be aware of your attitude, equal equal or one up. Be aware of what they really need. Help them dig down to discover what's underneath the surface need that they say, gee, this is my problem. It probably is a symptom of their problem. You, you may or may not choose to help them recognize that. Many people don't know the difference between surface problems and underlying primary problems. Um, finally, make a judgment call and even discuss. Would you rather have a specific suggestion or I'd like to offer you some ideas about how you can learn to solve your own problems better. You can ask them outright, which would be more useful. If they're ruled by a false self, they will probably say, well, right now, I have this problem right now. I don't care about problems. I don't have a problem solved. No, they don't. They think they do. Okay. Um, as I hope is well evident at this point, the purpose of this video has been to invite your uh, awareness of when you advise other people. Incidentally, I focused on advising adults. Advising children is a related and separate issue. Frequently they won't ask for advice, sometimes they will, but it's a different situation because kids need lots of advice from caring, sensitive adults in order to prepare them for independence. Well, kids need advice. Adults may or may not need advice. That's a whole separate question I'm not going to go into any further. Um, a pet peeve of mine, you may or may not care about it, is I get hooked, uh, meaning I feel resentful uh, right away. If someone, even if they are well-intentioned, if someone looks at me and says, you know, uh, Pete, what you really need to do is uh, learn to listen more and stop talking so much. When I hear the phrase, you need to, I go, ah! Uh, I have an instinctive reaction that says, excuse me, I didn't ask you to tell me what I need, and you have no idea what I need. You're talking about what you need. Would you care to rephrase that advice? This may be my own personal problem, that I want to offer it in case at times it bothers you or you do it. Be careful of your language. Innocently saying you need to uh, implies you know how to run the other person's life better than they do. Uh, it's unlikely that you know what they need. You may guess. You may have an opinion. It sounds different, for instance, if you say, I think you need. That makes it feel very different, at least to me. I'm oversensitive on this point, I admit it. Um, my point here is to, has been to invite you to reflect. How do you give advice? When? To whom? What kind of result are you looking for? And notice the several things that it can be very helpful to you and the other person to be aware of. If you want a deeper look at this dynamic that we all do with each other, advising, with or without invitation. If you want a deeper look, here's an article on my nonprofit website, self-improvement website. As part of lesson four, there are seven lessons there. Lesson four is a lot of information and opinions about how to optimize your relationships with kids and adults. So here's the link to an article that goes into much more detail than I have here about the art and science of giving helpful advice. 
As always, if you have any comments, suggestions, reactions to this video or any of my other videos, I welcome your comments, um, either on this video or in my channel or in my website. Meanwhile, thank you very much for watching.